just to recap on what you you were saying there about you know you were feeling the need to kind of address a cultural thing that would kind of would stretch beyond psychotherapy am i am i getting that right Jill? yeah mm. yeah that's exactly it. It, it it was like for me it became clear that my path was 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 trying to find a way to to work therapeutically with bigger bodies <laughs> you know with organize with, with i mean i guess communities organizations groups of all sorts of sizes and um, and different types of groups, um, and and that that hasn't been easy, and and I I can't say that I've made that transition um, uh, in a complete way in, in any shape or form yet, um, because I, I mean I use the term cultural therapeutics, and um, and and I can't use that word with people who aren't. Um, interested in the psychological and the therapeutic because it would alienate people. So, you know, if I'm working with a community, I don't talk about cultural therapeutics, but but I think it's useful for those of us that have a psychotherapeutic background to start thinking as the, the extension of the therapeutic into the realm of culture, society, um, those larger systems in which we live. Mm. Mm. So it sounds like making that shift into those larger systems is something that's still happening for you. It's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's about finding how to work with them um, and to be paid and to make a living. It, it, mm. it, what I found is that people are interested in the in the community facilitation that I do and community research that I do but more often than not they they want it done pro bono they want me to be a volunteer there there isn't funds for this sort of work or or not in very many places Mm. yeah yeah so I guess that's a real challenge in terms of you taking care of yourself financially and yeah and doing the work that you're really passionate about here Mm. yes yeah. Yes. And, well, it, and it, it's something about that I, I also have to translate it. It's like, you know, I have to listen to, um, uh, to the town clerk or to the councillor. That's C-I-L-L-O-R, the political councillor. Mm-hmm. Um, or I have to listen, listen to uh, the transition group or the uh, community centre. And then I have to, I have to, I have to really hear what their uh, difficulty is, what they're wanting to address, what they're wanting to research, what they're wanting to do, and then actually uh, uh, turn my cultural therapeutics into the language that they uh, will understand and will um, will respond to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so that you might have a language for what you want to bring that that yes. isn't kind of what they would understand. Yeah, or or that they wouldn't want it would it, it would it wouldn't resonate with them. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so in, a, in a way, it's that lesson of always listen. I mean, it's it's very light person what's person centered therapeutic work. We don't jump in and tell the client what's right for them. We listen to the client and we act as a mirror. Mm. So the client can deepen their own being through our empathic, accepting, authentic responses. And in a way, it's very similar when working with a community or a, or a, or a, a, um, a community organisation. You know, you, you have to take your lead from them all the time. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so there's a strong link with a person-centred ethos there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jill, there's been a question in the chat room around, I guess, the theme. Like, what do you mean by synergies? You know, we're maybe close by that already, but yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I think I, um, I used to use the word holonic shift, mm. and people didn't really get that word, and so I switched it to synergy. And in its simplest form, it's the... Um, 